Hello, this is Jason T. Ingram here. It's another one of my morning editions. And when I mean by morning, it's 12.49 p.m. And uh, I just got done with doing seven days of recording. Not all in a row, though. I skipped a couple days because it was getting very intense. But this particular recording project was something very different. For one thing, I documented just about all the recording that I've done on video and I wanted to show people how I do it because I used free software in order to do this and I guess some of it is to prove a couple of points. Um, one is that uh, the towns that I've lived most of my life are Sorry, I'm still a little bit waking up, so I might be a little spacey. But I like to do these videos in different times of the day when I'm in different moods. If this was at midnight, oh my god, last night, uh, my head was spinning so much because of the intensity of this project that I'm working on. And uh, when people are really hyper-creative and they can tap into all of this really crazy, I hate to use that expression, but really wild kind of innovative ideas in the creative realms and sort of just grasp this and then mixed with a background of having a lot of discipline and a lot of different creative areas and uh, the creative process for some of us is very intense and it's spiritual and it's magical and I just really am becoming aware of how amazing this is and how privileged I am to be able to do these things and how hard it is to talk about it without ego tripping. And I think a lot of other, you know, artists feel the same way, uh, no matter what your medium is. I call myself a multimedia artist because I do so many different types of things. But most of them I do pretty shitty jobs at, like, you know. Uh, visual art, I have really no form when it comes to drawing and painting and stuff like that. I can trace things and kind of freak them out. So, uh, wow, so I'm exhausted. I mean, I, I exuded so much energy last night. It was finally after midnight before I got done. And then I wanted to keep listening to my piece because I feel like from my perspective, it's got a transcendent quality to it compared to a lot of my other projects that I'm kind of doing for different reasons. And the funny thing about this is that I feel like I'm doing this project for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that I had some experiences where there were some people that were a part of my regular life. And for some reason, there was something going around that said that I am not a producer, that I don't produce records for people, that I've never had a recording studio, and all these different, and the only, and so it was really weird to have that kind of a rumor going on about me, like, you know, no one's ever, you know, taken my favorite line of work that I've ever done in my life, that I've been doing since the late 80s, which is multi-track recording and composition and arrangement and stuff like that. And, you know, I get people that kind of ignore what I do because they don't understand it. Oh, it's just weird, you know, because that's what a lot of people say about experimental stuff is, oh, it's just weird. Or, you know, compositional tricks or anything unconventional. It's sometimes just put in that category. And so I assumed I was going to get back into my music when I moved back to Portland. And it just it wasn't that way. So to finally be doing this and to actually be finding some people online who um, like my music and some people in the community that like this kind of music has really been amazing. And something very magical happened last month, and I still really don't know how to put it into words when it comes to some connections that I've recently made. So I'm going through some really intense stuff right now. So... Anyways, this is my bedhead. This is my morning coffee. I still haven't eaten breakfast yet, so I get kind of jittery, and I woke up with cold hands, which is weird. I usually don't wake up with that kind of poor circulation. Usually it's in my feet, and so uh, it's just that I have been ex exerting a lot 
a very intense energy and I'm really putting myself out there and I'm doing some kind of projects that I'm not familiar with. I'm kind of getting into some new territory. I mean, it's kind of the same stuff, you know, take a very epic uh, piece of music and, oh yeah, and I'm licensing it too. And that's kind of scary uh, because I've never, I've never wanted to do that. And I'm doing things like I'm taking this instrument, which is really interesting. It's, it's a newer instrument. And a lot of people don't think about it as an instrument, but it can be performed on. It's incredibly versatile. And what else was I going to say? <clears throat> uh, it can be tuned. Some of the tom drums and the snare sound, you can actually get tonality out of them and use it kind of as a sequencer. And so I did some of that too. This is a clarinet that was from a garage sale in Wasilla, Alaska, and somebody sold it to me for too much. Oh my god, I found out it was even put on crooked, but uh, see there's a little gap right there because I never did fix the cork that goes in between these two joints, so I'm amazed it works at all. <laughs> I think I spent $85 for that. I think the people that bought it probably paid five bucks for it. But they were, a, they were a sweet old couple, so I eh, might as well get it. This is a cornet that was given to me, or maybe I think I traded for it when I worked at Alaska Music Center. And I'm terrible at it. I'm really horrible. But, you know, I keep playing and playing and playing, and then I find, uh, you know, half of the material that I've played is completely useless. And then the other half I keep and I edit together, and I do it kind of like a collage. So I'm very confident about my techniques when it comes to non-linear editing and I can't seem to find anybody that'll ask me to help them with an album that uses loop-based and non-linear editing and I'm convinced that most artists today that do pop rock and dance music and a lot of different styles unless it's bluegrass or something you know they use this type of technique I'm almost positive about it and so I feel like I'm doing a lot of kind of standard industry things that are popular these days, and they work. It's just that uh, I haven't found anybody to recognize uh, really what I do, so I decided to say, hey, fuck you, those guys that said that I can't do this. So like I said, it's a bad motivating force. <laughs> But the piece I'm doing is full of anger and rage, and there's also a lot of beauty in it, and there's just a lot of ways that I just, like, you know, it's like people have fucked with my head for most of my life, and a lot of my art, and a lot of artists are like this, too. It's like, the world has totally fucked with me. Now I'm going to fuck with you, and I'm going to, you know, kind of give you an experience of what it's like to be in my head for 15 uh, 16 minutes is twice as long as the original version of this song. So I listened to it like four times after midnight last night. And then I was still in bed at 3.30. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm getting some ice cream. And I'm going to get myself an angry orchard. And I'm going to sit there in my headphones, sit on the floor, and smoke another couple bowls of weed and listen to this thing. Because it's, it, it just, it's taking me places. And I hope that the listeners will be taken to the same places that I am when I hear this music. And so um, that's part of what it's like to live with the artistic temperament. <laughs> I broke my plunger. I go to the dollar store and I get these. And I was I, I had such a backache, so I put it behind my back as like a lumbar support. <laughs> I was kind of desperate. You know, when I sit there and I get hyper-focused, I don't want to keep getting up back and forth, you know, just to put an ice pack on my back. I'm just like, go, 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 go. And it's and it's great because I get, I get hyper-focused, which is pretty rare for me when it comes to work. Usually I'm very distracted and it's very frustrating. Um, I don't think I showed this in any of my vlogs. This is my Verilux Happy Light, and these are $40 at Walgreens. They're about 50 or 60 now. I've had these for years, and it's getting towards the time when we don't need light therapy boxes every day like it was in the winter. So now it's March, and we've only got a couple more weeks of winter, and I'm just uh, enjoying the nicer weather and trying to get out more. And uh, although 
I've had a lot of depression this week. It's been very fulfilling, and I put down some of the other business stuff so I could focus on doing my art again, which that's what it's all about. So, hey, thanks for watching, and next time I'm going to wear probably street clothes and not my 90s.